My name is uh, Judas Sipashon Crowling, and I'm a software engineer at Red Hat working on the Hawklark project. Um, I'll go very quickly over some basic concepts of tracing and uh, distributed tracing. If you attended uh, two talks ago in this room, you might be um, you might know all of that already. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah. So I'll just talk very quickly on that. Um, then we have a demo and a Q and A at the end. But uh, if you end up with uh, questions, just uh, stop by the Red Hat booth. Um, I can answer your questions there. And uh, tomorrow, I think at two, we have a distributed um, tracing salon. And uh, I would also be there. Um, before I start with the uh, theory with uh, tracing, I would like to run a command, this one. Um, yeah, this one here. So I'm going to use that for the demo uh, terminal. So what this command does is uh, it will create a OpenShift cluster. Examples, vertex, open tracing. So this one, we'll just create a OpenShift cluster and um, we'll install Hawklar APM on it and a, an application composed of four microservices, but uh, we'll get to that in the demo. Um, right, so tracing. Um, tracing, I, th I guess we all have been doing tracing. Um, already, so tracing is uh, basically getting information about what, is, what is, uh, your code is doing. Um, so if you have an algorithm which is complicated and you wanna know how long it takes, you just uh, add time information to that, so before and after, and uh, if you're still not satisfied, then you just step into your code and add more uh, time information. That is already tracing, right? So. Um, Tracing basically is um, is a tactic of knowing what's going on on your code on a on a given context. On, on in, for instance, in an HTTP request, the context would be like the conversation between a client and a server. So whenever a HTTP request comes in, tracing would tell us uh, what is going on on that HTTP request. Uh, perhaps um, a timing when the request comes in, when the response is sent out. Um, perhaps we would also do some timing on the database. Uh, perhaps we have a business method there that we want also to uh, not only time it, but um, we want to store what is the order ID, for instance. Um, yeah, so that's tracing. So um, this model worked quite well um, for, uh, for monolithic applications um, because tracing is mostly for a single process or a, that's how it was done until um, recently. Now, that doesn't work for um, microservices because one HTTP request is not, um, is not telling us much, right? So one HTTP request is only a part of a big picture. And um, then we start with the need of um, passing on the context that we've got from the first box. So in the first box, the request comes in, uh, and then we get some downstream HTTP calls and perhaps some messaging going on, perhaps some database. Um, here is a database, right? So then uh, remote services, remote calls, perhaps HTTP request, perhaps something else, and then here's something uh, synchronous, a message sent somewhere, and then it's captured by two places, and so on. So we need to pass the context to, to those other uh, components. And that's um, distributed tracing. So distributed tracing is basically expanding the context uh, from a single process to several processes, perhaps in, a, uh, in remote uh, machines. Um, now, it also brings new problems. 
uh, with that. So usually when we talk about microservices, we also talk about polyglot applications or, or polyglot architecture, right? So I have a service in, in Java and then I have a service in Node.js and another one perhaps in Go. Uh, so um, how do I make sure that data collected by my Java application is the same, in the same format as my Node.js application, my Go? Um, uh, and that's the context for um, open tracing, right? So open tracing is a um, is a vendor neutral open standard for uh, distributed tracing. So um, and it specifies a language agnostic API for capturing information. So I think this is also not new for those who've been here for the last couple of talks. Um, um, so it's not specifying a implementation; it's specifying the, the um, um, just the API. So the interesting part is it defines the semantics of distributed tracing. So it specifies what is a span, what is a span context, what is a trace, what is a tracer. Right. So that's the interesting part on, on uh, to me, the most interesting part on open tracing itself. Um, that means your application would not talk Zipkin or would not talk Yega, would not talk um, Hockler APM, it would talk open tracing. And then your tracer would know how to talk to the backend or how to send the data to that. Um, yeah, so um, this Hockler thing that I'm talking about, what is that? So Hockler is a, an open source project. It's uh, sponsored by Red Hat. Uh, it's basically a set of monitoring related components. Um, and uh, it's been used in some Red Hat products like OpenShift. Um, and uh, Hockler APM is one of those modules from Hockler. It's the application performance management uh, component. And uh, there is a, a open tracing compliant tracer for Hockler APM. Right? So I guess we can say it's a open tracing implementation if there is such a thing. Um, so for the demo, that, that was it for the, 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 the theory. Um, uh, for the demo, uh, I want to achieve uh, two things. So I want to see two things. Uh, one is a screen like that, where um, based on tracing data, we can extract uh, business insights like that. So I want to track, uh, if you look at the, uh, the, the top part of that screenshot, we have a transaction called place order. So that's the, the transaction I want to trace, I want to track. Um, and the second goal, if we have time and if uh, everything works, um, uh, we are going to try to get an operational insight uh, with the same data, so the same application reporting the same data is just a, a different view of uh, what we are sending there. And based on that, uh, I want to I want to see if a new release is no worse than the previous release of the same application. Right. So we're can we release? I guess um, most of you are aware of, of what it is, but it's basically um, the tactic or the technique of running two uh, versions of the same application at the same time. Uh, one serving like 90% of the traffic, one serving 10%, and then you, uh, the 10% is the new version, and then you assess if it is good or, or not. And if it is good, then you just increase um, um, the percentage of traffic reaching that application and, and decrease the other one until the new version eventually replaces the old one, right? So that's a, a canary uh, release using blue-green uh, deployment scenario. Um, right, so enough talk. Uh, Let's see some code. Um, this code here is in Java, but it should not matter because that's not what I want to show. What I want to show is uh, the tracing code. I guess it's... Can everybody see this code here? Yeah? Okay. Um, So we've got uh, that command that we started earlier is running. And I hope the IP is correct. 131. Yes. Great. So um, 
as I mentioned before, that command uh, set up a, an OpenShift cluster um, with a Hawkler APM and our application. Um, Hawker APM should not have any data yet. I just have to accept some self-signed certificates here. Yeah, that's fine. An admin password. Thirty-seven. Okay. Um, so we, we see no data here. So it's this Hawker APM. Um, don't bother about the UI. Uh, the important here is not Hawker APM. It's um, it's just interpreting the data, right? Similarly, uh, important part here is not OpenShift. Um, okay. So this is our application. Request comes in into this URL here, um, and it's served by this service. Now, this service is a Vertex uh, application, and uh, for those familiar with Vertex, uh, Vertex communicates using a, distribute, using a, a event bus. In our case here, we are using a distributed event bus, so that when this service here sends a message to the bus, the message is seen by the other, uh, the other pods. All right, so, you could use a, a, a number of ways of uh, sending data from this one to the other ones. Uh, that's just the way it is for this particular example. Could be gRPC, could be um, uh, HTTP calls. Um, I guess uh, before that, I would just uh, start another script. Um, so this shell script here will just generate some random orders. while we look at the code. Yeah, okay, it's running. Okay, so, um, as we've seen there, um, no, it's better. Um, this is our example. Uh, we have the four services here, one, two, three, four, and uh, a common module, right? And, uh, our request starts here in the order manager. Um, our code here is a vertex vertical. It basically just starts a, a server on the port 8080 uh, with uh, three endpoints, get status, post orders, get orders. Interesting one for us is the, the post orders. Uh, that's the one that our script is calling. Um, and we have a handler, a HTTP handler. And what it does, it's, it's, it just creates a span context. Um, again, this is a open tracing um, um, concept. Um, in, in this particular case here, in this code here, uh, it is just uh, creating a context from, from scratch because uh, that's where the transaction starts, right? And then we immediately create a new span now, you're gonna notice that we have some information here which is duplicated, like um, the URL, uh, Vertex knows the URL already, right? So why, why should I add that? Or the Vertex knows that this is a post uh, call. So why, why should I repeat this, this information? So um, every day there's a new framework integration on open tracing, and I expect most of this code here to uh, not exist, right? So um, what I do expect to exist is a code like this one. So uh, the transaction name, for instance, like this place order, this is something that no framework can, can, can deduce. So you have to annotate your code uh, to provide information like that. And then we start the span. Um, and uh, at some point, we, we wanna check the account for that order. And this one would, before doing a remote call or changing the context, we inject uh, our, our uh, span context and then make the, the, the remote call. In our case, we send a vertex event to this destination here. And this destination is acted upon by another application. So account manager is another service. In this vertical and uh, Somewhere here, we, yeah, here, um, event bus, consumer. So this is the, the, 
this code here is saying, I listen to this endpoint or to this uh, destination, whereas this one here says I send to this destination, right? Um, and then within that code, we extract the, the context. So in this context here, we'll, I would never say never, but uh, it would never be uh, uh, started from scratch. It would derive information from the, 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 the context that has been created in the previous code. Um, then we start a new span, and we specify that this span is a child of the parent span. Okay, so um, again, don't bother about the code itself. Uh, I, I guess um, you can understand what it's doing. And most of the other um, modules, they're doing very similar thing to this one. So we are just gonna move over to a Hockler APM so that we can have a better visual on, on all of that. So some of the information we could derive from this view here, so we could say that, yeah, I know that the request is, com is, is reaching this point here, but we don't know what this one does. Now looking at the code, we know that this one calls this one, but what is the relationship for, uh, with the other ones, right? So um, this is Hockler APM. Hockler APM is receiving the data that we are, so our uh, gen order script that is running on background is uh, exercising our uh, example, which is then sending data to Hockler APM. Uh, and Hockler APM is processing the data, making aggregations and so on. And then we, we derive information like, so we know that whenever a request comes in, those are the services which are possibly uh, related to that request. We, we see that we have uh, 800 requests here, 800, um, requests here, even though uh, here it's not a real request. It's a vertex uh, event. And then we see 300 here, and then 700 here. So we have a notion of uh, what, um, of the importance or, or uh, so if I fix something here in, in performance, how does it affect the, the whole uh, stack, right? Um, we have a, a, we can dip into specific instances uh, this one is a successful one, I guess. So we have a view like this. So it's just like the, 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 the screenshot in the, the slides. Um, but uh, there. Good. Okay, so now the first goal was to get a screen like this, right? So place order. So remember that, go, that, that, that code that we've seen adding a, a span tag called place order, like transaction place order? So this is a server looking into that information and then making aggregations for us. So we know that 43% um, of the false are item not found. So perhaps we have a broken link in our store, right? Or um, out of stock. So perhaps we want to not show items on the UI which are uh, out of stock, perhaps, I don't know, perhaps this is okay, this kind of fall, and account not found. Now, um, we could also, item ID, I guess, yeah. Uh, then we see that, um, yeah, those are the, the, the most sold items in our store, so. Um, so, and that, only with uh, tracing data, um, so by, just adding a couple of lines of code into our uh, business application, we are able to derive information and aggregate, and, uh, and that's the kind of information we can extract from open tracing, right? So um, it's not only um, logging stuff or sending stuff or, or determining problems, but you can also extract uh, valuable business information from that. And for almost for free, right? You, you just add code to your application and um, yeah. Now, uh, the second goal was to do a canary release, right? So we are going to try that. Um, so we have the account manager, which is one of those OpenShift applications here. So account manager. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new um, application here. So a new um, yeah, application called account manager blue, as in green blue uh, deployment. Um, and uh, We'll just scale up this one to, let's scale it to four now. And then um, 
the new one would just be responsible for 20% um, of the request, meaning it's one pod in five, right? Um, and uh, in, in this particular case, Hopper APM is able to extract some OpenShift environment variables, so we know that that request that we are receiving now, they are related to uh, the service order manager dot account manager one, which is the version one of this account manager. Let's aggregate that. 10 seconds, that looks better. And okay, so I'm gonna enter into the account manager. So all of this code here is available on GitHub on the Hawker APM project. So Hawker APM on GitHub and then uh, examples, vertex, open tracing. Um, and here we do a new build. Yeah, account manager blue, that sounds right. And then we start a new build. So um, what I have here is a simple project that can be deployed on OpenShift. Uh, in this case here, I just have a Docker file, and that, that means uh, when I do a start build, to just send the whole directory to OpenShift, OpenShift will build it uh, based on, on information from that Docker file. Uh, blue. blue, okay. And from the current directory, and I follow the logs, yes. It's fast because I've built it before. Um, it's not, it's usually not that fast. Uh, okay, so now um, we should see the build on OpenShift, but we have no applications yet using that build. So the blue and the, the, the that one. So now we just do a new app, a new app on account manager blue, and then some Hopler APM environment variables. That looks fine. And we should see a account manager blue appearing here. Yeah, the blue, right? So we have uh, four pods with the old version and then one pod with the new version. We expect anyone to at least be not worse than the previous one. And uh, in some seconds, or oh, we have data already for that one. And we can then compare, we can compare data. So here we can see that, so this is a, an operations person looking at the data, right? So this is not the business person, the business person was in the other tab or consuming that data somewhere else. And this is, uh, again, uh, not, the UI is not important here, the data is the important part. And you might have notes that I used only the command line I could have clicked on, on stuff like uh, the scaling. I think I, I scale here on the on clicking, but uh, we could have as well just uh, scale. Uh, and we are going to do that soon uh, once we determine that here. Okay, so this new version is not worse than, than the old one, right? So I guess it's safe to scale. The old, uh, first we scale up and then we scale down. We don't want to. have fewer resources than we need. So the blue one we scale to four, and the old one we scale to one. So we invert that uh, manager. Yeah. And uh, on OpenShift we should see, so you notice that I mostly use the command line uh, because um, if I can use the command line that means I can automate it. Uh, and that's important to me. I mean, again, important is the data. So I, if, I, if I have a system that reads this data, uh, the same system could determine whether or not to scale up or down my application. In this case here, um, so we now have the old version um, with uh, serving a fewer um, requests than the new version. The new version uh, is scaling up, um, but both are still running in parallel. And uh, if, we, if we say that, yes, it's, it looks fine with 10%, uh, it looks fine at, uh, uh, sorry, it looks fine with 20% uh, and it looks fine with 80%, then uh, it's safe to just turn off the old one. Uh, 
right? And um, in a few moments, we should not see um, the the old one anymore. We should only see uh, orange bars, which are the ones for the new service. And uh, yeah. And on OpenShift, we can see that we have no pods here and no five pods. So that means um, the green service uh, is now ready to receive the new version or a new new version. And um, then uh, the, the, the game starts again, right? So uh, I can deploy a new version on this one and increase the uh, number of pods to one and decrease the, old, uh, the, the other one to four and so on. Um, and uh, the operations person is empowered now with information, enough information to make a decision whether a new version is good or not. And um, yeah, um, that's it for the demo. I can stop my script and yeah, so um, if you want to know more about open tracing, um, that's the website, Hockler. Dot org is where you can find more information on Hockler. Um, if you have any questions, any comments, any suggestions, if you want to help, uh, it's an open source, open source project, so just join us on, on IRC at the Hockler channel. Uh, if you have ideas, uh, use cases, uh, more than welcome. And uh, tomorrow we have then this um, distributed tracing salon, so um, if you want to practice open tracing, then stop by. And uh, if you have uh, other questions than the ones, uh, I, don't, I don't know if we have enough time here for a uh, lot of questions, but I'm at the Red Hat booth, so just stop by and, yeah. Questions? What is the post? Oh, overhead. overhead yeah. um, well, there is an overhead. Period. So no matter uh, what monitoring system you use or uh, what tracing tracer you use, uh, there is always an overhead. Um, there are techniques to reduce uh, the overhead to a level that is acceptable to your business, right? So just logging information is not it's not that much, um, but it depends on the tracer implementation. So there. It, for, so if no tracers out there um, are good for you, you can write your own tracer, uh, just logging and stuff. So there are open trace implementations where you can specify sampling uh, strategy, for instance. So you want to log only 10% uh, of the requests or only uh, requests that reach a certain code path and so on. So, But there is an overhead. I guess it's not uh, that expensive, but it all depends on the use case. Again, depends on the, on the implementation of the tracer. So that call is only an API call. So in, in that particular case, whenever the application boots, it, it uh, instantiates a new APM tracer, which is specific to Hawker APM. As far as I remember, it's not, um, it's not blocking. Because it, it just puts on a queue, and then there is a batch uh, trace publisher that on the background in another tra uh, thread uh, sends data to the APM server. So that specific call is not blocking, but that doesn't mean it's not uh, doing something, right? So it might run out of memory, for instance. And do you support any kind of alerts? Of? Of alerts? Mm, there is a Hockler component for, for alerting, uh, Hockler alerts. Um, but. So, no. Um, the reason why I'm asking is because in some situation, if I can react yeah. to alerts and do some actions, for instance, increase the number of my parts. Yeah. So, um, no. I'm, so, answering for Hockler APM specifically, no. It's uh, talking for open tracing. Uh, no, because it's not on the scope of open tracing. Right? So you could have a system that is reading your data and acting on, on, on that. Um, so I guess the important part here is that you have access to the data, to the raw data. Right, exactly. Yes. Thank you. 
Yep. Uh, the feature itself is part of the application process, right? So it's running within the actual application, whatever you're going to do. Yeah. Is there any way to, to, um, to decouple the two so that there's a process like a central tracing mechanism? Or like how would you use that? So you, you do need some, some part of that on the application uh, scope. Um, because, so there are two things here. So one is the, the, the framework part in, in the, the communication part, and that could be in a sidecar deployment, or it could be uh, in a proxy. So you have a proxy in front of your application, and that proxy is doing the tracing. The tracing. But again, this is uh, infra, uh, monitoring the infra, right? So you, you can extract much business information on that. Um, so there, there is value in, in embedding this information inside your application, your business code. So in your business code, you annotate saying, uh, this is something that I care about, this is an operation that I don't care, or this is, yeah. Does that answer? I mean, th there are some discussions there on, on doing sidecar deployments or sidecar, um, yeah, deployment to your application. So you, you deploy your application, and your application, instead of contacting a, a, an external one directly, it contacts the sidecar, which then, right? Right, so I would say oh, with open tracing, the possibilities are unlimited. So you can write your own tracer that does that. And it is something that uh, have been discussed in, in, uh, for open tracing. So um, the thing is, um, there are so many things to do right now, right? So uh, to instrument all the frameworks out there. And uh, so if it is a use case that is important to you, then uh, join the community. Absolutely. Yep. I'm very unfamiliar with tracing. How do you follow uh, trace to different services? Right. Um, each tracer has a different uh, technique. Usually what is done is uh, you embed some context information into the metadata uh, to your downstream. Uh, downstream. So if you're doing a HTTP call, for instance, then you add a, a HTTP header with the transaction ID, for instance, or the request ID or something like that. If you're doing a JMS or a vertex code in, in, uh, in this call, vertex call in this code, uh, you add that as a vertex message metadata. You have to do that some, somehow, right? So. Um, there are some discussions, again, on that. But uh, the, so the problem is the more you standardize, um, the less opportunities you leave for the unknown, right? So um, people are, so we are talking about uh, in, what is the transaction name, what is the span ID field in, in the span itself, and so on. Um, so yes and no, I guess. <laughs> So I guess that's it then, um, thank you.